monkey will be late. There was an old man called Michael Finnegan. He grew whiskers on his chin again. And when the wind came, they blew them in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan, the guinea gun. There was an old man called Michael Finnegan. He climbed up trees and bucked his skin again. Took off several yards of skin again. Poor old Michael Be careful. Remember, don't say anything to Mummy. She'll freak. She thinks we're taking the bus. I won't. Never taken the boat to school before? Today was the first day. We only started at the school a few weeks ago. All right. I'll just make sure I've got the right names, okay? It's Sarah and Matilda Quirk. Q U I R K, yeah? Yes. Right. They call Matilda Monkey because she can be a little monkey. <laughs> Would the girls have been wearing life vests? I'm not sure. Sarah said her mum bought the new orange ones last week. Excuse me. Sorry. You'll find them, won't you? You bet we will, Polly. The mother's name is Denise Quirk. She's uh, separated, probably using a maiden name, Odell. She works as a chef at a local restaurant. Copy that, Gavin. Anything else? When you find her, get us some photos of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, have you seen Jack? <laughs> yeah, he's at the doctor's. Liver specialist. <laughs> yeah, we reckon that's the least of his problems. He needs a, a brain specialist. <laughs> OK, I need someone to locate this woman. Both her children are missing on the Lane Cove River. OK, give us the keys, Mick. I'll tackle the DPP. OK, this is their new address. The kids go to Mercedes College, right? The principal's been trying to call the mother, but uh, she hasn't arrived at work yet. You need to move on this really quickly. Go on. Helen, can you make yourself available for a meeting in 30 minutes? Mm-hmm. About what? Uh, I have no idea. Asia is paying us a visit. Asia? What do the spooks want with us? Don't know. You haven't been selling any national secrets, have you? Probably. <laughs> Check down this area. I might get my divers and we'll just check the foreshore around here. Is that okay? okay? Yep. Oh, good on you, Helen. Ah, oh, excellent. Thanks for doing that. Uh, this is Helen Blakemore. She's our shift supervisor. I'm also the intelligence officer. Uh, this is Rob. This is Paula. So what are your real names? <laughs> <clears throat> what can we do for ASIO? Well, swap offices for a start. You could have the best view in town. Yes. 
We're currently interested in a Chinese national who's based in Canberra. We know he's coming to Sydney in the next couple of days for a fishing trip with some other Chinese gentlemen. For all we know, it might be just that, a perfectly innocent fishing trip. Or it might not. It's important that we know what's happening, so we'll have a listening device on board their boat. The thing is, to stay close enough to monitor it, we need to be on a boat ourselves. Well, so you want an unmarked boat and a driver? Simple, really. What's this Chinese national done, or doing? Let's just say he's of ongoing interest. OK, so you want us to provide the hardware, but you don't want to tell us what's going on. Mm. Yeah, Jack Christie. Mm-hmm. All <laughs> oh, right. They ready? <laughs> yep, sorry about that. There's one in every bunch. Would you mind, Helen? Oh, Any time. Yeah, we're available. Hang on, I'll just swap ears. Yeah, I can hear you better. <laughs> so if you could give us a copy of your duty roster, Jeff, we'll select some suitable officers. Sure. How'd you go with these known sex offenders? No likely lads in the neighbourhood, as okay. far as I can tell. I'll whistle Alex up from the DPP's office. I really want to talk to this girl, Polly, and her friends. Uh, no, Gavin and um, Matthew have already done Look, that. Look, with two kids at stake, I really want to make sure we're asking the right questions. Fair enough, fair enough. OK. How's your liver? Mind its own business. I told Sarah there's no way she's taking the boat to school. I told her. Kids' minds of their own. It's all my brother's fault. It's his boat. He said if we're going to live by the water, we had to do the full Sydney thing and have a boat. I hate bloody boats. Where do you keep the life jackets? Bloody things cost me a bundle. They're gone. Well, that's a good sign. You're going to tell me no one wearing a life jacket ever drowned? Could they have gone to see someone like their grandmother, maybe a brother or maybe a family friend? No, not without telling me. Is there any possibility the kids might have run away? <laughs> They're good kids. Are things okay with you? Like, no difficulties with boyfriends or anything like that? I am a single mother trying to earn a living. I don't have time for a bloody boyfriend. Where's their father? How would I know? Last I heard he was moving house. Uh, what's his first name? <laughs> he wouldn't have. Bren's not like that. He didn't, he didn't even contest custody. I take Bren short for Brendan, yeah? He's not going to grab them out of a bloody boat. I didn't see anybody. If I'd seen any strangers around, I would have told those men. OK, yeah. Do you know what's suspicious things? Yeah. You do? Right, OK. You ever noticed uh, anyone, you know, who wasn't suspicious? Someone who was walking a dog or just jogging? I didn't see anybody. OK. How about at other times? You ever noticed anyone watching you or your friends? No, right. but my friend saw a guy over there last week with the camera. OK. Thanks, Paul. Hey, Jack. Listen, one of the schoolgirls said she saw a bloke taking pictures of them around here about 8.30 last Wednesday. We'll get a description? Yeah, he's wearing a black bomber jacket and a baseball cap. Well, I can't find anyone who saw a guy in a baseball cap. This lovely old gent down the end said he saw an Audi parked on the street that didn't belong here. All right, what colour? Dark blue. You've got a lady down here who saw a bloke driving exactly the same car wearing a baseball cap, but it might not be him, Jack, because yeah. I saw him this morning. Personalised number plates, RF. OK, Jack, I've got three possibles here. Ruth Farrow at Dural, Rocco Fabolo of Campbelltown and Richard Fleet of Hunters Hill. What's the address? 45 Prior Street. Well, that's close to the school. Now I'll check and perform, shall I? Yeah. So, Jack. Yeah. Jack. Ju hold on, ju just a minute, Jack. Orca, this an Asia called, mate. They've requested a meeting at 1600 tomorrow. Yeah, they want you and they want Sykes. Why those two? Look, we got a couple of missing schoolgirls and a possible pervert on the loose. So you tell Asia they can go and get themselves well and truly. It's understandable. I want you to make he and Sykes available, all right? Oh, look, Jeff, I, I really don't want to pull Jack in until he's found those kids. All right. Make it Riley and Sykes. Nice house. Mr. Richard Fleet. Yeah, what can I do for you? Detective Christie Riley, St. Clair, Sydney Water Police. We'd like to talk to you about two missing schoolgirls. What, what schoolgirls? Their names are Sarah and Matilda Quirk. They went missing on their way to Mercedes College this morning, sir. Well, I don't know anything about it. We think you do. I beg your pardon? Where were you 8.30 this morning? Well, I was looking at a building site down in Southern. You might want to check your car? Sure. Can anyone corroborate that? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I met my contractor there. 
Okay. What about last Wednesday? Same time, 8.30. I don't know. I can't remember. Well, you better put your thinking cap on then, chum. I was at the office. Jack. Well, that's funny, because your car was seen parked in Askin Avenue, Lane Cove, and you were spotted on the riverbank watching schoolchildren. It's not me. Yeah, you. You like watching schoolgirls, do you, Mr Fleet? That's a bloody offensive remark. A bloke driving your car, wearing a bomber jacket and a baseball cap found in your boot, was seen on the riverbank watching kids. OK, OK, I was on the river last Wednesday, but I was not perving the school kids. So what were you doing? I was breathing. Thank you. Breathing, what's... Yes. Breathing. Uh, breathing. Breathing. Sometimes I need to take a break. Just spend a few moments breathing. OK, what was the camera for? I didn't have a camera. Look, I don't know who told you I did, but I didn't. Now, I've got a family of my own. I don't go around abducting little girls. Now, excuse me, I've got a client to me. I didn't hear anyone mention the word abduction, did you? Jack, we've tracked down the girl's father. Right, let's check this bloke out. I want to know about every traffic ticket he ever got. They on this river, we would have found them by now. Mm. Yeah, yeah, something. Some trace. Well, come on, kids go missing all the time. It doesn't necessarily mean they've been abducted. Let's just take there at the movies, huh? Well, how come you're such a little ray of sunshine today? He's in love. upstream from the school. Can you identify that as being one of your daughters? It's monkeys, isn't it? You have to tell us. He must, he must have ripped it off her. Hang on. Where's the tag? <laughs> monkeys had a name tag. I said name tags on everything. No, it can't be hers. Label could have been torn off. It's not monkeys. <laughs> it can't be. Mr. Quirk, it's the police. Open up. Brendan Quirk! Oh, hi, kids. How are you? Uh, I'm a policeman. I was wondering, do you know a Mr. Brendan Quirk that lives here? Hey. Hey, Jack. Look, the neighbours haven't seen him all week. They don't know where right. he's gone. Uh, According to Blakemore, he hasn't made a withdrawal from his ATM since the 14th. He's vanished. Right. Listen, Alex is with Denise. I'll let it go because it's easy, I think, Jack. Hey, listen, Jack. You yep. can cross Richard Fleet off the top of your list because he was with his contract all morning, like he said. What is the point of this? Brendan's got nothing to do with it. Denise, can you just have a look around and see if the girls have been here? You know, there might be something here that will give us a clue as to what he's up to. Brendan's the most harmless guy on the planet. He's not going to take the girls without telling me. Look, anyone can run off the rails, especially a husband who's lost custody. I told the other cop he didn't even contest it. Denise, we want to rule him out too, but you have to help us. <sighs> it wasn't like a normal split. He put himself into psychiatric care. Psychiatric care? He blamed himself for Nathan's death. Who's Nathan? Our middle one. Drowned in a pool last year. Sorry. He dived in the shallow end and hit his head. We told him. We said, Natty, never dive in the shallow end. Over and over again. But it wasn't Brendan's fault. Afterwards, Brendan just sort of, you know, he gave up on everything. He didn't trust himself with the girls anymore. Denise, did your husband ever talk about taking his own life? I'm sorry, I've got to ask. No. People do it, Denise. You know, men do it when they can't see any other way out. 
Maybe he'd kill himself up. But not the girls. Never the girls. OK, Denise, can you think of a spot that, you know, he used to like to take the girls? You know, like a, a picnic place? Beach or...? Uh, the, the house he used to live in? We used to come here camping all the time. You, it, was a, it was a special place for us. You're going to have to stop up here because we can't go any further without a four-wheel drive. I think... I think Monkey was conceived here. That's how come she's such a, a wild little thing. Ah, oh, Denise, I don't think it's a good idea you smoke. You might alert him. What do you mean? Well, we don't want him to know we're here, OK? How many hours a day like left, you reckon? A couple, maybe? Yeah, at the most. He's not here. I know he's not. We're wasting our time. Someone's been through here. There's fresh tracks, eh? Oh, my God. It's Brendan's. He's been dead for a few days by the smell of it. Looks like he's been videoing himself. Yeah. He's taken these and he's washed it down with the good stuff. No, 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 Okay, Polly. Hello, darling. Hey, Mum, didn't I look cool? Yes, you did. Oh, no, 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 just... <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. I thought about joining ASIO once. Actually, you need a university degree. But then I sobered up. Well... You get to have more fun than we do, Mike. You get to carry guns and drive fast cars, arrest people. So what's going on? Uh, this is Gavin Sykes. He's one of our best boat crew officers. Paula Watson. Right. Mm. Right. You can stay if you want, Sergeant. Yes, I know I can. I choose not to. See you, Helen. It's very important, mate. Yeah. Meet John Smith. He's going fishing on the harbour with some of his mates tomorrow. And we're going to keep an eye on him. John Smith. What is he, a super spy, is he? Guys, if you can refrain from asking unnecessary questions, we won't have to lie to you. Deal? Yeah, fine. So then we can get back to what we're supposed to be doing. Sure. <laughs> is the boy lost? Then I know where he is. I know where he's gone. He's climbing to paradise, up a river of stars and stones. He's climbing the terrible crags of the sun. It's a poem by Judith Wright, The Lost Child. <sighs> Look, he didn't take the girls. He's been dead for over a week. Died from an overdose of barbiturates. Could have arranged for somebody else to abduct them. But after his death, I mean, why would he do that? I don't know. Variation on a theme, if I can't have them, nobody else will kind of thing. He was obsessed with his dead son. The girls didn't figure in it. No, oh, they were taken by some rock spy that we know nothing about. OK, so yeah. what if this guy got the wrong girls? What? All right, assume for a second that it's not sex-related. What if he didn't mean to kidnap the Quirk sisters, but two other little girls around the same age? Like who? OK, Polly. Sarah's friend, the girl that you spoke to. She's got a little sister, her name's Bree. 
Right, she's around seven, maybe eight years of age, and she's got long hair, just the same as Matilda Quirk. Polly and Bree take her to school every day, mm -hmm. except today. Today Bree was crook. Mm -hmm. huh? Now, so he's waiting down there by the river, two little girls in a school uniform, in a boat, on their way to school. And the Quirk girls go by, same uniforms, same yeah. hair colouring, oh. same age group. No, I don't buy it. Why would a stranger want to kidnap Polly and Bree? I mean, assuming it's not sex related, as you say. I don't know, maybe the parents are filthy rich? Oh. I mean, ask them. Well, we've got nothing to lose. You got a yeah. surname? Yeah, Fleet. What? Fleet. The name's Fleet. Thank yeah, you. thanks. Why didn't you tell me the police had spoken to you? Because I knew you'd carry on like the bloody KGB, that's why. So you didn't tell me you had kids at that school, Richard. Why? It slipped your mind? You didn't ask. What on earth are you hiding? I'm not bloody well hiding anything. How about showing a little bit of faith in OK, OK, you can knock bits off each other later, right? But right now, we are exploring the possibility that your daughters are the real targets. That's crazy. No one would hold our kids to ransom. I can assure you we're not wealthy. Uh, to an outsider, you may appear wealthy. Do you have those photographs, Mrs Fleet? Um, yes. Thank you. Jack, look. I know. You're clutching at straws. You bet we are. We're desperate. Does anyone hold a grudge against you? No. What, you never stiffed a client? I don't believe that. What about strange messages on your, on your voicemail? Only you. So you guys going to tell me what this is all about? Just dangle a line, Gav. You know, it's going to be a very long and ugly afternoon if you don't start trusting me, Robbie. We didn't know John Smith knew these other guys. Are they his buddies from back home? Is it strictly social? Are they setting something up we ought to know about? More like passing information? Exactly. So who are these other guys in? Business Smith. What kind of business? Ask a bunch of questions. Yeah. They run a Chinese travel company. Hey, my girlfriend works in a Chinese travel company. Which one? Not uh, sure. And it's a small world, isn't it? <laughs> huh? So which boat are we actually looking at? So you want to tell me what I'm actually doing here? You want to tell me the truth, Paul? Well, say these guys make contact with someone on shore. Or they do a letter drop for another boat to pick up. We only have one chance to locate and follow the second party. You know all the harbour approaches, every street, every vantage point. I couldn't do without you. Besides, you're very good looking. <laughs> yeah, Jack, it's Mick. Any news? No, no, nothing. No, it's, no, it's been 24 hours now. Yeah, we're in the red zone, mate. You'll be telling me you've given up steak, eggs and chips. How long have you been here? The tunic, right? Yeah, the one the diver found. Yeah, there's nothing in the report to say that there was a, a, a missing a name tag. Right. So maybe it's not monkeys. So whose was it? Oh, it's got to be another school kid, right? Same size as monkey. Breeze. Yeah, see this mark? Paint from when we had the gazebo done. Right, so what was it doing in the river? Yeah, how'd she lose it? It was in a carton in my sewing room. She's grown out of it. I don't understand. Why would someone steal Bree's tunic? Make us think she's been abducted. Thanks, girl.
Uh, it looks like they're making a move towards George's Heights. Hmm. Shouldn't we be going? Spoil sport. I was having a very erotic dream. Rob, our guests are heading towards George's Heights, so are we. Uh-uh. We're gonna lose? Better that than letting no one on their tails. Huh. If you're waiting for me to describe it, you can forget it. It's way too embarrassing. What is? My dream. So how does your girlfriend feel about you chasing dangerous crooks? I don't know, I don't have one. Okay, say you want to get out of your marriage, right? You want your kids, but you don't want to go through the custody battles in case you lose. So what do you do, right? You steal your own kids. You set it up to make it look like an abduction, then the three of you just disappear. <coughs> well, it's a big leap, Jack. I mean, who did it, the husband or the wife? Well, Richard Fleet was the only one seen watching the school. Well, I think you'd know it if you abducted the wrong kids. What if you hired someone to do your dirty work? Huh? Listen, this Richard Fleet fella, he's got a triple A credit rating, pays all his bills on time, right? Then why has his gym membership lapsed after 10 years and why are his health insurance payments in arrears? Not only that, he's got a vintage car on the market. Maybe he's a gambler, got a cash flow problem. I thought of that, but there could be another explanation. He could be making a move. Well, you'd still need your health insurance, right? Not if you're planning to go overseas, Jack. OK, is his house on the market? I'll check it. Thanks. Is good for a buzzy? You're a natural. Good. Maybe you can give me a reference, huh? <laughs> Did you ever think of leaving the coppers? Nah, not really. So your girlfriend works for the Chinese. How does she get on with it? Oh, well, she is Chinese. Oh. I mean, mum's Vietnamese, but her dad's Chinese. How'd you meet her? Ah, uh, she lives in a unit upstairs. Wonderful people. Very beautiful women. Is it serious? You reckon I asked too many questions? <laughs> ah. Oh, where the hell did you learn to do this? Spy college. It was an elective. Was either massage or learn to mix a really dry martini. <laughs> yeah. You know what I think? They're doing exactly what it looks like they're doing. Jerome Rami. Come on, you can be better than that. Make it look like you can't wait to get me home to bed. Look, this really is a waste of time. I don't know anything. See that woman? Her name's Denise. She's the mother of the missing quote girls. Must be killing her. Why have you let your gym membership expire? I'm thinking of changing gyms. <laughs> and your health funds? Yep, I'm changing those too. And the Bendy's car? I don't drive it anymore. It's taking up space. You're a liar. By omission, you're a liar. What? Why haven't you paid Polly and Bree's school fees this semester? Haven't I? According to the school, you always pay by the due date. Why not this time? Because you knew they'd disappear. Your marriage isn't in very good shape, is it? What were you trying to do? Huh? Trying to get custody of the kids without the hassle of the family court? Is that it? Look, we're not fighting over the children. We're not fighting over anything. We're in it for the long haul, me and Jen. Who have you paid to kidnap your kids, Mr. Fred? Yeah. Hell, they've been a waste of time. Start the engine, Gav. Let's get out of here. Right. Paula. 
Can you hear me? Paula. Paula, can you hear me? Paula, can you hear me? We're bailing out. Sounds like Rob's calling it off. Another spoil sport. Yeah, I hear you. See you back at the wharf. Righto. Oh, got me all hot and bothered. Oh, that's detective training for you. Do you want to go and continue this somewhere else? I could tell Rob that we got lost. No, no, I've got to go back to the office. Oh, sure. All that paperwork? No, we just got two missing schoolgirls, that's all. Sure. I understand, Mike. Had to get you back before your mum starts worrying. So what, no last-minute threats this time? Hey, don't push your luck. You know your way out? Yeah, it's stamped indelibly on my brain. How'd that go? Do you know where are my girls? I'm sorry, I can't help you. Why have the police been questioning you? Look, I don't know. Where are they? Look, I can't help you! You bloody liars! Oh. Denise! Bloody liars! Wait! Crimes! The man you hired must know he's stuffed up by now. Tell him to leave me alone, please. He just might try and eliminate his mistake. Double murder. Give me a name. Give me a name. Look, I never wanted anyone to get hurt. I want a name. I just... I wanted to you know, disappear quietly, just take the kids, relocate to Cape Town, they're fast. No. Dorothy Blair. Okay, where is she now? How do you contact her? Look, there's a mobile. <laughs> they were at a holiday house up on the Hawkesbury. Where is she? You must have spoken to her. Just once. Well, she was freaking out. I told her to sit tight till I found out what to do. I haven't been able to contact her since. Dorothy. I don't even give her photos. She still picks up the wrong kids. I said, you really do find it, just shoot the stupid bitch. This is the New South Wales Police. My name is Detective Christie. Now, we know you have the children. We want you to release them now. Just let them walk free. They've been here, but the place is empty. Right, if they headed off, where would they go? Well, the National Park. There's only a billion square miles of it. Well, let's start, huh? Come on. Sarah! Matilda! Sarah! Matilda! Sarah! Monkey! Matilda! Sarah! Can you hear me? Don't be scared. Sarah and Monkey, it's the Sydney Water Police. We're here to help you. Monkey! Sarah! Monkey! Tilda! Sarah! It's like looking for a needle in a haystack, Sarge. Now we've yep. covered this area pretty well down here, so uh, we'll head up this way, all right? All right, take that lot with you and we'll go this way. Right up. Sarah! 
Jack, I reckon we only got about an hour of daylight left. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, we're going to keep looking if it takes all night. Sarah! Matilda! Sarah! Okay! Sarah! Matilda! Sarah! Matilda, this really is the police. My name is Jack Christie. I'm a detective. Was an old man called Michael Finnegan. He grew whiskers on his chin again. The wind came out and blew them in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan, begin again. There was an Come on, monkey, help me out here. I don't know the words. Sarah. Sarah. It's okay. It's okay, Luke. It's very good to see you. Is Monkey there with you? Is your sister there? Look, I really am a policeman. You see this? This is my official identity, you see? See, it says New South Wales Police Service, and there's my name and my picture. Now, is Monkey with you? Monkey. Oh, it's good to see you. I think I found your hat, too. Come out and I'll take you home. Very brave. Very, very brave. Let's go see you. picked up at the airport on her way to New Zealand. Right. How'd you go on that other business? Oh, a total waste of time. Otherwise, OK. Listen, Mick, I've just received a fax from Fiona Williamson. You'd know her by a pseudonym, Paula. Huh. She intends to make a sexual harassment complaint against you. Are you for real? At one stage, the operation was in danger of being exposed so we had to pretend that we were there for social purposes. What do you mean by that? I put my arm around her at her request. That's all. That's all. Now you're absolutely sure that that's everything. You don't believe me. It's not what we believe, Riley. There's a protocol laid down, Mick. We all have to follow it. It's a total crock, Helen. OK, I'm your harassment contact officer. From now on, everything goes through me. OK, absolutely everything. And I don't want you to contact Miss Williamson at all. Is that clear? Yes. Excuse me, sir. A uh, gentleman from Asia. It's Asia. Word if you've got a moment? Yeah, straight through. I think you should sit down and write a detailed account of what happened. I don't think you should do it now. Yeah. I take it this is about the Fiona Williamson allegation, is it? It's an unrelated matter. We weren't entirely frank with you yesterday. Oh, why am I not surprised? 
Her name is Chen Zhao Wei. She works at a Chinese travel agency owned by the other men we were surveillancing on the boat. It's uh, the owner? No, he's what we call an illegal, lives and works in the Sydney Chinese community, but he's actually a trained intelligence officer working undercover. What exactly are you talking about? We suspect the Chinese intelligence service is running Gavin Sykes as a source through his girlfriend. The operation was primarily designed to test that theory. Sykes was briefed yesterday afternoon, had dinner with his girlfriend last night. Today, the target knew we were watching. Inescapable conclusion, your boy sang like a bird. Oh. You are full of surprises, Jack. No, I would never have picked you as being uh, natural with kids. Oh, it's easy with other people. All right, so you're not thinking of having your own? Oh, too much work. Hey, thanks for asking. <laughs>